if you grew up loving on animals, it's it's really it's really hard to to not rescue, you know, to to not pick up that dog on just because they're they're everywhere. Well, you know, I always thought that dogs, their main job is to make us smile every day. So they don't get they don't have to pay rent. They don't have a mortgage. They don't have they don't pay for their food. But if they can make us smile, they've already they've already earned their day. Every single one of these animals are so worth it to me, that time, effort and energy, because I know that I'm just a vessel. I'm just a small little piece in their life and their forever human is out there. And I just am that little carrier until they are seen by that person. Hey, I'm Dr. Doug. I'm a chiropractor for both animals and humans. My life's passion is volunteering at farms and helping rescue animals in need. Join me as we connect with people who have dedicated their lives to helping animals. Together we'll discover how helping animals live better lives will teach us to be better humans. Welcome to the Animal Cracker Podcast. Today we have a special guest, Diane Ewart from the FART Dog Rescue Organization. F-A-R-T stands for Foster, Adopt, Rescue, and Transport. It's a passionate initiative dedicated to making a positive impact on animals in need. FART aims to be the voice for animals, providing safe environments through fostering, promoting adoption, rescuing from dire situations, and ensuring seamless transportation to loving homes. Join us as Diane shares inspiring stories and insights from the world of animal rescue. Get ready for an episode filled with love, laughter, and heartwarming tales. Let's dive in. Welcome, Diane. That and was my... so good. <laughs> Did you I, like that? I almost started crying. Yeah, I've never heard anyone like read fart to to me out loud and what it stands for and what it means. So that yeah. was really cool to hear. Thank good. you for that. And And how about... Say fart out loud with such passion, okay? Right. Oh yeah, wait, like right I, now on the count of three? No, I did, I did. Oh. I mean, meaning I introduced. Oh, I thought it, we were gonna. Yeah, you did. But you, we could, we could yell fart. But one, two. Yeah, one, two, three. Fart. fart. <laughs> so I know that's okay. very unusual, but it's it's also fun, you know. Like I have two kids that now are twenty eight and thirty five, and mm -hmm. growing up, a word like fart would make anybody laugh, oh, yeah. especially with my level of dad humor which really never evolved past the fourth grade level. Perfect. Um, you know, and I wish my my humor got any more sophisticated, but um, but it's it's actually a, a cute name. Oh, did I say your last name right? Did I? Yes, you did. It, it was perfect. Yeah. <clears throat> okay. Yeah. I, I was going to check with you before that, but oh, no. I didn't know if I pronounced it correctly. No, you did. Does good. it get does it get pronounced incorrectly sometimes? Oh yeah. All the time. All the time. E like for some, it's an extended E or like a double v like everett uh but mm. i also it doesn't offend me too much thankfully <laughs> okay well good i'm glad i didn't offend you no. um so l let's say one more time uh l let's go back and how did you come up with this name we might as well point yeah. to the point to the elephant in the room you know yes. that old saying there's an yeah. elephant in the room we should at least acknowledge that there's something so, smelly yeah yeah so you did say <laughs> You name this, and it's a serious organization. This is yeah, a is. a five hundred one c three nonprofit. Mm -hmm. You know, I looked into making a nonprofit once, and I oh. had a lawyer friend, and it's like a big deal. Like oh, it takes yeah, it takes time to register it, to do it properly, to do it legally, uh, to do it with the IRS. It's like a big deal. So here you are with a real organization that you came up with a kind of cute, clever. Uh, unusual name, but yeah. how did how did you come about the name? And actually, the acronym works because uh, foster, adopt, rescue, and transport is exactly right. what you guys have as your yeah. mission. I mean, that those are the key pillars of rescue, and yeah. it came from some when I first started rescuing. I remember being in like a lost and found face group book page, mm -hmm. and there was some conversation going on, and someone had made a joke about fart being a name for a rescue, but they, the F-A-R-T were different words. Yes. Right. That's what I was trying to say. Yeah. So fart was different words. Um, and I'm like, man, that's actually pretty funny, but this was way before I ever thought about starting a 501c3. Anyways, I saw in the Facebook group. And then when I decided to become a nonprofit, um, I was thinking of names and I just 
couldn't get it out of my head. And I'm like, but, but then there's that like fear of like, how is that going to be received? And then all I could think about was, I don't care. Like it feels good to me. It feels right. And ran with it. <laughs> yeah. I like it. You know, yeah. I don't, I, you know, I'm at a point in my life or actually it's been my whole life where I'm very serious and very silly and I can do that in the same exact moment even. Yes. So yeah. like working with animals is very serious for me and I like to have fun too. Like, so when a cute dog comes in, I love making fun of its little eyebrows or yep. must or must or mustache. And I just love it, you know? And at the same time, I'm dead serious about wanting to make a difference in the oh, life yeah. of that animal, if, if, if at all possible. And I'm that way with people. I'm yeah. a silly dad that's you know, as my kids are growing up, I'm silly, but also right there. Like, well, I like, think that comes like on through, my job. Yeah, that comes through in your videos. I was watching one of them and you were adjusting a duck. <laughs> and I can't remember exactly what you said, but it was something along the lines of you adjusted it and you had said like, oh, I don't want to like pinch too hard or move something. And the woman was just like, oh, really? Or whatever she had said, she seemed very sweet. And you look back at her and was like, yeah, I don't want to break its neck. <laughs> and she, I just like yeah. she just looks back down at the duck. <laughs> so that like silliness, because right before that you were like, oh, like yeah, I can feel this, I can feel that. Yeah. But it just and, it made me laugh out loud because I'm like, <laughs> you just went right back into it. I was like, I like that. That's well, good. you know, adjusting. Just a side note: adjusting a bird's neck. You know, whether it's a chicken or a goose or a or a duck, mm -hmm. uh, it's very tricky because their bones are very hollow, like. <laughs> So, so they're very delicate and they also have 14 bones in their neck while we have seven and they're have double curve. Doctor, so, doc, I so can't, it's, like, it's, it's a little you're, tricky. You're talking to someone who thinks like, like a human body is tricky. Like I can't imagine a duck, a chick. I can't imagine the work that you do. And like, you just have to make that decision. And it's like, oof, that's nerve-wracking yeah, it makes, is it makes my armpits kind of sweaty intense. thinking about it <laughs> speaking of fun stuff so i was uh at this uh draft horse rescue called uh gentle giants draft horse rescue in maryland mm -hmm. and uh i started adjusting after i was done adjusting some horses we went to have lunch but there was this little goose this little gosling walking with a bad limp and i was like can i work on that goose and they yeah. like absolutely so it was kind of a spontaneous one it wasn't one of the horses on my list that day mm -hmm. that i knew i had to see this was just i can't really walk past anything without jumping in yeah so that goose's name was ryan gosling oh my and i gosh. thought that was i thought that was very funny but it had a very serious cute. had a serious hip issue so let's get back to so you were saying fart and you were saying you you came up with the name and you decided to go with it though right mm -hmm. Yeah, I I mean I had okay. to. I couldn't not because like you said there has to be a element of fun in mm -hmm. the rescue world and when I say fun I just I just mean just remembering that there has to be joy in in what we're doing and I couldn't put myself in a position to be that serious with the name and there's so many puns, you know, that can go along with this. There's so many great things. I get a lot of messages. Just, we love the name alone. It just, it stands out. Like there's a dog farting on the back of my car, you know, like who isn't going to look at that? <laughs> it's just a big sticker, not an actual dog. <laughs> well, you know, I always thought that dogs, their main job is to make us smile every day. So they don't get, they don't have to pay rent. They don't have a mortgage. They don't have, they don't pay for their food, but if they can make us smile, they've already They've already earned their day. And I find most dogs can make us smile within the first three seconds of the day. And so they always are uh, in surplus. They're never in deficit. Oh, never. Yeah, so, mm -hmm. so they're fun and they make us smile and give us that unconditional love. T let's talk a little bit about the, the, nit the nitty gritty of you doing rescue. Yeah. So do you have like a, a start to it? Like, oh, oh my God, I'm going to rescue this first dog before you became an organization i'm sure you had an experience and if it's not one but what was one of the 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 turning point ones you know for you so from the area that i live in alone there's not like you're in you're in rescue if you're uh, like level of i don't want to say like compassion but ability to say no <laughs> 
Um, where, where it, I don't even know where you live. So where do you we're live? located in the Central Valley of California. So okay. yeah, it's it's just there's a huge overpopulation problem and strays are everywhere and people do their best. But if you grew up loving on animals, it's it's really it's really hard to to not rescue, you know, to to not mm. pick up that dog on just because they're they're everywhere. So it all started when I moved back to California in about 2019. Um, I was out of state in Minnesota. So of course there's, you know, not a whole lot of stray dogs walking around over there. <laughs> uh, so it was once I moved back that I, I really got, really got into it um, because I just, I loved what I did in Minnesota. I sold a lot of deck railing and it was, we just, that company was amazing. It's called Dex Direct. And just the whole atmosphere is something that I had never experienced before. And then when I moved back to California, it was like this void of that, like kind of excitement, that, that passion. Uh, so when I started rescuing, I decided like, this is it. Like, I want to be able to, you know, establish myself as a 501c3. Uh, but not only that, be able to do it in a way that where I can be creative. And that continues my passion of, of making videos online and, you know, capturing attention and telling a story for an animal who can't talk. So it all, it all really just kind of came together, especially once, you know, I realized I could actually make money online from people watching videos because now my passion is fueled by income and it just makes it go a little bit further and then you know meta changed their payout policies and things kind of went a little weird for a bit <laughs> yeah, meaning uh like facebook wasn't yeah like when they stopped paying yeah when they stopped paying per view so they don't pay per view anymore uh, which they which they used to. And so I went from being able to, you know, make a living to not. And the not part has has now existed about like 10 months because it's so hard. It's it's hard online stuff like what what you do on, on yeah. YouTube. This is really hard stuff. <laughs> yeah. I mean, we have kind of a big organization in my office. I mean, I mean, big for content creating, we put out 50 to 65 videos a month across uh, to TikTok, to Instagram, to YouTube. And and also we upload to Facebook once in a while. We, we're not that big in Facebook. Although we do have 240,000 followers on Facebook, but we just, it's not our main focus. Right. But we also have two offsite editors that work every week, 30 hours each. Mm -hmm. So we, we literally have 90 hours a week of people working on my social media. And um, that's a lot, you know. Um, and then it's not always good. So it, it goes up and down, like rules change or the algorithm changes. And then all of a sudden you have a horrible month, even though your numbers went up. So I could say, I got more subscribers this month, more views, more clicks, more everything. Right. But, yeah. but it, it actually, who knows what happens and no one ever explains it because you <laughs> can't, can't call YouTube and go, Hey, what happened here? You know, and, uh, we make... <laughs> content because we like it and we also try to make it sustainable uh so i understand tell us about like one of the first dogs that changed everything for you you know so i was thinking about this as i was um just trying to think of all the stories and all the dogs and all of the it's it's hard for me to identify any point in time where there was this one thing that had the biggest impact. And that's because ever since I got into rescue, this is going to sound really bad, but I'll explain. Ever since I got into rescue, I've been trying to get out of rescue. And from that, I mean, I am so passionate about what I do. But when your passion takes over your life and doesn't allow you to have a voice because you are so busy being a voice for someone else. I think that's really dangerous. And so mm. with every dog that I have brought in, it's been this learning experience of, of how can I still live a fulfilling life that brings me joy, that keeps me connected with people while being in rescue. And mm -hmm. every single dog teaches me another lesson of, of what that looks like how how can I keep doing what I'm doing? I'm not a big rescue by any means at all. There was at one point in time where I had 28 animals in a one bedroom like house. It had a nice size yard. I'm not justifying the 28 animals, but um, that happened 
like so fast from point, like I picked up a pregnant mama at the shelter and she had nine puppies. There's 10 dogs right there, you know? Wow. <laughs> and it, it, it took over my life and I lost a lot of things because of it. And I will never put myself in that position. Um, and I think that's really difficult to do for a lot of like rescuers to make that decision, to put themselves first, to, to really look at what they're getting themselves into because like you said you have a whole team you know producing the content that you do and you grew that to that point right you didn't just like snap your fingers and have a team no 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 i did i did did it all myself for the first two years until i you know and not even well Mm -hmm. but but i right and uh yeah but but yeah no i mean it grew usually the way i grow is i wait till everything is painful and busting out. And then that's when I finally Mm -hmm. take the next step to upgrade something. But I have to be suffering, be in pain for a little while. And then I decide, okay, I got to do something different. Yeah. But I don't want to get, I don't want you to get you off track. So, so, you know, there's that balance for you that Mm -hmm. was like, how can I do all this work on your mission of, of making a difference in lives of dogs? Uh, And then also how could I have a life and how Mm -hmm. do you not go broke? Right. Exactly. So, yeah. but, but these are the exact people that I want to have on my podcast is you, because mm. you're doing the work. You made these decisions <laughs> yeah. and, you know that, and uh, you're passionate my... and you're passionate, you know, this is my first podcast. Really? Yeah. <laughs> well, well, good. You're doing great. Uh, um, I think it's wild. Like it's wild to me um, to, to, to be here right now because, you know, I, I try to be authentic and genuine and present rescue as it is for, for my life within what I do. And so um, the, the heartbreaks, the, <laughs> the craziness like of me forgetting to put a diaper on Trudy and she's a paralyzed dog. <laughs> so we have to manually express her bladder, but forgetting to put a diaper on her and like holding her while I'm talking to a solar guy and she poops, like she starts pooping and it's like landing on my foot, like mashed potatoes, right? Like all of these crazy things I just share with people because I want to show up authentically. I want to share a product that I'm really excited about. And in this case, it's my product. I made this video course recently called How to Massage Your Dog. The website is called howtomassageyourdog.com and it's still on sale if you check in with it, but it gives you a way to work on your dog from head to toe, whether it's a few minutes a day or outright full body sessions. It's good for that puppy. It's also good for your senior dog. It's a way that you can manage pain and help that dog not suffer as it goes through the different stages of life. I show everything in this video course from hand techniques through full body massage, everything from a teacup dog to a Great Dane. It's all in one video course. Check it out, let me know what you think, and there's even a 30 day money back guarantee if you're not completely satisfied. HowToMassageYourDog.com. I'm gonna brainstorm okay. with you, okay? We'll do word association. Yeah, we can do okay? it. Perfect, word association. oh, I love that. Yes, okay. yeah. Um, give me a name of a dog that that touched a touch a chord in your heart apple apple okay who is apple tell me about apple <laughs> and, she's and, my baby she's right, my so, first foster fail okay good so she, let's let's yeah. hear about apple apple is a dog <laughs> she was thrown over a fence uh i was called she was seizing and we didn't think she was going to make it. So immediately there's a trauma bond. That's what my daughter calls it. <laughs> uh, trauma bonding to this dog. And she's just a miracle dog. She came back to life essentially in my arms. Um, sorry. I'm just, I just remember holding her in the sunset and I thought she was passing and the vet had already closed and the emergency vet was 40 minutes away. And by her labored breathing, I just thought sh- she was leaving us and so i just wanted to hold her because i had only had her in my care for about 10 minutes and i she didn't have a name she was just this little like six week old underdeveloped puppy like that (sighs) so i just remember holding her and thinking she needs a name and all i could see in this setting sun was an apple orchard and so i decided to call her apple and then miss thing just kept breathing (laughs) And then I'm like, okay, we need to go to the emergency vet because I thought it was distress. Um, But it just turns out that's who Apple is. She just likes to put a little spice into your life, scare you, 
a lot and then just act like nothing happened. And that's been her that's been her motto since day one. She's uh, really special. <laughs> so we're going to have, if you're listening to this podcast, like as you're driving, just know that there's a video version of this on my Animal Cracker YouTube channel. Yeah. And we're going to, you're going to be able to see Apple, a clip yeah. of Apple, a photograph or whatever we have, whatever, whatever uh, Diane oh, can show yeah. us. And so, Apple. so this is on the screen right now. You'll be able to see it. And, and, and you should like flag the podcast save it because apple is one of like the most like viral dogs probably like I, and i'm not kidding because and people may have seen it. it it's just this little video it's an eight second video of her walking down the hallway and she just so happens to have this like cutest trot because she's blind well she's visually impaired she can see shadows and a little bit of movement but i had run down the hallway and she comes around the corner looking for me but she does it in this like army marching fashion where she's like going one direction and then she's like boom right like at the camera and just prancing perfectly following me um <laughs> but it goes to any beat of any song her prances so i, so you, I mean you, the, you have fun with that i can't even tell you how many there's oh there's one video of like 30 million views on her walking down the hallway to star wars like dun dun dun, dun. it's just <laughs> oh wild and then i gotta yeah. i i, did, I haven't it's seen insane. that so i i can't wait to see that um you oh, know you said good. something that really touched me and i could tell it was touching you just talking about it which is, um, you know, that the moment of giving giving her a name. Is she's mm -hmm. a her or a he or mm -hmm. or other yeah. pronoun. Um, so, so that's a that's a beautiful thing. And you know, a, around the rescue world, because I go as a volunteer to to work on at rescue farms. Uh, like, there's one that I'm really fond of called Tamerlane Animal Sanctuary, and I've been there a few times now. And they have 200, well, last time I was there, there was like 287 animals and they have a farm. And so they have like 40 goats and cows and oh, 50 goats. chickens. And yeah. some are, are in physical therapy. They have a broken wing or they were medically, you know, they were abused and there's pigs like and there's goats. It's a big property. Yeah. I mean, it's huge. And, uh, oh, but, you amazing. know, just depending on, you know, animals come and go, animals die, uh, you know, but they know every single name of 200. <laughs> I mean, there's 297 <laughs> names, but see, there's something important here. It's, it's not just huh. that that's funny, which it is, but it's right, because right. They're, they're not expendable and mm -hmm. they mean something to these people that run oh, this yeah. farm. And when you have uh, an animal that has a number or a serial number, then we don't really give a crap about that animal. Mm -hmm. And if they die, that's okay. If we don't try, that's okay. Right. If they mean nothing to us, that's okay. And there's a big difference to making yeah. that connection. And, and symbolically in the world that we live in, a name is a connection. Right. You know, we name our child. We, mm -hmm. um, we, it's one of the first things we do when we meet someone. So names are significant. They're they're much deeper than you think. Right. You know, it's just not like, hi, my name's Diane. But like, mm -hmm. it's it's a big deal. Yeah. And so, you know, I think, you know, <laughs> when you named, when you named her was mm -hmm. when she said, like, I'm not checking out. Oh, oh I, she I was, love she that was approach. Yeah. Not, not metaphor, metaphorically and literally discarded, mm -hmm. thrown over a fence. Mm -hmm. And as a six week old puppy, approximately six weeks, and she was discarded. And why should she hang out? She was she was leaving us. Was. And then you pulled her out of the white tunnel by going, no, you got a name here. You're Apple. Oh. And and even if you didn't say it out loud, but you already thought it, mm -hmm. it happens because we thoughts right. are physical. You started a new direction and you pulled her back and yeah. now you have her. And so. <laughs> So names are significant and well, especially, yeah. especially with animals, you know, we can either choose that they mean nothing to us right. or we can choose that this animal is important. Yeah. I have a whole notes list on my phone of names that I hear. And when I hear them, I always, I'll put them down in the notes. Doug is actually on there. Um, but <laughs> I put, I'm someone who puts a lot of thought into the names because I know how much like you said, care, I'm going to be 
giving this, I mean, this, this isn't just a dog. This is a dog that is my responsibility. This is a dog mm. that is under my care. And if I have to call it a name, I don't like, hey, hello, <laughs> it's going to be a rough go. I've changed names. Like there was, there was a pup, one of the nine puppies that I had mentioned earlier. Um, we did a community thing where community members could donate and then name one of the puppies. Right. Mm -hmm. I would, um, I wouldn't advise that. <laughs> because the names uh it was it was a good name it was a good name but there was it just never fit him I never felt comfortable saying it and then one day he had like hopped up on the counter cute and the bin just came out of my mouth I'm like bin get down I don't know where bin came from but then he was just our binny boy and you know, Benjamin fit him so much better than what he was before. <laughs> so yeah, it's names are everything, everything. And it's, but it's the connection. So like you said, you yes. could change a name or, or you adopt a, a dog from a, a rescue organization and <laughs> that name doesn't click with you. Yeah. You have, you're allowed to change the name and, oh, yeah. and you know, it's between you and your dog, you know, I know. <laughs> like it you is. have to decide together what that name's yep. going to be. And, and you then do. it, it, it resonates or it doesn't. All right, let's play another game. Okay. <laughs> Think of a dog right now. Okay. <laughs> that... I love games, by the way. So this is <laughs> okay. like a perfect anytime <laughs> let's play a game. I'm like, yes. <laughs> I did this. I did this a lot with my, my daughter's 28, but I did this a lot with my daughter growing up. She'd yeah. be like, let's do something. You know, like, so we're yeah. always being creative, but all right. So think of a dog that, mm -hmm. um, you came into contact through your work, mm -hmm. uh, that, um, it didn't go well. Mm, what do you mean by not well? I don't know. What, what do you think of? <laughs> uh, I, n nothing really. I mean, I think, I don't want to say not well. Like I'd mentioned earlier when I, when I <laughs> said, <laughs> I've been trying to get out of rescue since I've been mm. in rescue. Um, the dogs I, I bring in, I, I know that I can provide care for. I, I found it way too early on uh, to, to not, be diligent about what I'm able to provide for these animals. And so mm -hmm. not well in terms of like bringing a dog in where there's a behavioral thing where I didn't feel comfortable addressing or, but I mean, there's been incidences in like within rescue that I've learned of how present you have to be like 24 seven with mm -hmm. rotations, with schedules, with having, you know, dogs, multiple dogs in the yard at the same time. And things happen in rescue, you know, like we've had two of our dogs get into an altercation before that left me in the middle of it where I'm, I got bit. And those are always really scary things, but really mm -hmm. real things that happen in rescue. Um, so gosh, I can't think of a dog, but there are situations where it's, yeah. hmm, I can't, <laughs> can't that's a whole nother thing i can't keep jeopardizing like me or my safety for it's just it's hard it's, it's such hard decisions to make sometimes yeah. in this world you know when you were saying before like you don't know whether to be in rescue or get out of rescue and it reminded me of like the godfather the mafia where like we got you in and you can never get out no I'm, and, i'll never and... get out <laughs> like that so once you're in, you can, once you're oh, in yeah. the family, we, you no, can't get 100%. out. No, a hundred percent. There's so, no leave in this world. Just, you just have to find a way to be in it. Yeah. In the capacity that you can. What was there ever a, a, something that came up that you remember as a heartbreak? Like one that just broke your mm -hmm. heart that the dog didn't live or the, yeah. the, the injuries were too much or it, it, you wanted more for this dog, oh, but yeah. it was, it was too late by the yeah. time you. So, so who that came into what, what name came to mind when so I just said that? That's going to be Vern. So I know Vern's a tough story for you and, um, and it probably broke a little piece of your heart living through it, but, yeah. but hang in there and tell me. So, so we learn also because people that get into rescue, you know, there's the good, the bad and the ugly of it. And there is good and bad and the ugly on a, on a moment to moment basis. Uh, you see things that break your heart. You see you have the joy of helping and, and changing and making transformations. And then you have also the ones that you, with every ounce of your soul, wish you could transform and they slip through your fingers. And, you know, yeah. tell us about Vern and, and, you know, and we'll be with you on this one. 
I, I still remember the first picture that I saw of him. It was posted on a rescue Facebook group and it was just this little gray mound. He was just a little gray mound just sitting there. And I like you almost don't see him at first because he kind of blends into the like cement. I mean, you see him, obviously, because he looks like a gremlin because uh, he didn't have any hair <laughs> or he had some hair. It was just really patchy, but he had a uh, mange, uh, it, a horrible, horrible mange. Um, and uh, his owners, they, this is what this is what hurt me the most about his situation. The owners saw him every day. They could see the the pen he was in from from their sliding door they they could see how sick he was and they decided one day that they were just going to euthanize him and that's when the neighbor who had also you know seen the dog and had you know tried to do the right thing talking to the family um they had mentioned to her that they like were just going to take him in to be euthanized because of how sick he had become in that moment. How did how did you get involved? <laughs> yeah, so I got involved because the the neighbor had posted on Facebook that family was going to euthanize, and I saw him, and I just he's he was one of those dogs where I knew um, that that the community that we had that fart has online, I knew, like, I just, I'm so confident in that community. Like, I feel like they trust me and my decisions about the animals I bring in. So when we bring them in and we need that, those donations and we need that help, they show up in ways that are just like, so incredible. So I knew, I knew that I had the community support. I knew that we could make a difference in this, in this dog's life. And so we brought him in to our care and it, it started a three month journey. So Vern was with us for three months and, you know, he has every single day was just such a battle with him and not in a way where, you know, he was suffering like he was, it was just, I mean, he's a dog. I don't know. He's, he's six years old. You know, he has this skin condition. I have other dogs at the house too. Um, so even introducing him to the other dogs, I couldn't because his skin was so fragile. It would rip open if he just like tried to roll on the grass. It was, it was so much work with him, but he was so worth it. Every single one of these animals are so worth it to me, that time, effort, and energy, because I know that I'm just a vessel. I'm just a small little piece in their life, and and their forever human is out there. And I just am that little carrier until they are seen by that person. And Vern was seen and so loved by everyone in our community and like online and it just to know how much love he had pouring into him and then for it to end the way it did was was heartbreaking and um i had to make the decision to medically euthanize him as his skin started getting better you know we start to see this like really gorgeous tri-color american bully that's just this chonky little thing with this tail that like it's the weirdest looking tail i've anyways he starts to outwardly get better and so i think this is the mo was one of the most difficult parts outwardly he was improving but he had been through so much internally he was just shutting down and to to see him get better and then to have to let him go like i wasn't just breaking like my heart i'm breaking everyone not everyone's heart but people who love like and then you know having to not having to, huh, then making videos you know to update the community and and living through this and, and pulling footage and it was it's just real it's a lot it, it is it was a lot with him I, I still can't go into a lot of like the comment sections yeah. of his videos. So, so what happened much. internally? Do you mean like so, mentally or do you mean he had organs starting yeah, to shut so down? So we could never get his thyroid levels to any sort of normal range. His, I mean, when they first tested his thyroids, the machine couldn't even read it. They were so low. And the length of time I had him and the increase in medication that we were giving him levels should have increased substantially more than what they were um the last couple of days he uh 
when he started getting really sick, I found out he had uh, pancreatitis. Mm-hmm. And I had text the neighbor, the one who had posted, because she had kept in contact with me wanting to know how he was doing and whatnot. And I had asked her, like, hey, ha- have you ever, like, have you seen this, this you know, runny stool um, vomiting, you know? And she said, yeah, that's been his whole life of them not being able to you know, give him medical care. And I look back on the one of the first pictures that I saw and I can see the runny stool in the so he'd been living with this for a really long time. And I yeah. just I couldn't I couldn't let him go through that anymore because that was always going to exist. The thyroid levels were always going to exist. And he let me know that morning that it was definitely time because he let out the the worst poop I've probably ever seen from a dog it was just like just here you go melina type like almost like bloody looking tarry and i'm like i can't i can't do this to him anymore it's not yeah so am i allowed to say bloody and tarry yeah that's <laughs> not a bad word oh well, poor bird. oh I'm, but he's I'm... like oh he's so gorgeous and i love i like i like looking back on that story and knowing and feeling confident that i did everything that I possibly could for him and that I'm confident in the decision that I that I made to help him pass so I mean you're you're you know you're in the trenches and you know there'll always be people that will you know give you advice that might not even know what they're talking about or you know everybody's opinion and uh you know, but the the credit belongs to the person who's in the arena, you know, and not not on the sidelines with judgment. Mm. Oh, and, yeah. We don't and, like those people. <laughs> and it's a tough world. So, you know, I give you credit because you are walking the walk. You're not just, you know, sitting back and you're, you're, you're living this life. One thing that's different about your you don't have a brick and mortar building right so you right. you you take dogs in sometimes to your house you right. look for uh fellow fostering people in your community you look for adoptions when you can you transport those are all the acronym of the FART mm-hmm. and um you know you're you're doing real work and i i have so much respect and admiration you. for you and oh. And just you're really a, a beautiful person, <laughs> uh, how you're living your life and inspires me. You, you already mentioned it a, a million different ways, but I'm going to ask you another question to yeah. kind of wrap it up, which is how does working with the welfare and lives of animals make us to be a better human? And does that strike you in any way where you'd say, you know, working my life, working with animals has taught me this or or shaped me this way or influenced me so profoundly because of this how would you answer that question that that's actually a really heavy question uh in terms of what i lost because of rescue not because of rescue but because of what i allowed rescue to be in my life so i'm going to brush over this and i'm not brushing over it just because it's 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 a big thing um but but last year in april i tried to take my life and that's what I meant by by this is heavy. This is heavy for me because I allowed rescue to constantly fatigue me. I mean, like compassion fatigue is it, that's a real thing. Uh, if you layer this and layer this and layer this and layer this, and you don't surround yourself with the 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 people that are going to allow you this outlet to whether it's just to call them and cry and vent and or or whatever it is, if if you don't have that in rest or in any part anything that you're doing in life um anything can really take over and i think that's more prevalent in rescue so i the things i'm learning now are there since last april are the biggest life lessons that i've ever learned because i never want to be in a position where i feel so where i all I want to do is feel something. And then it results into an action that should never, like I should have had the ability to stop this sooner. And I didn't, I didn't have the tools. I didn't have the resources. I didn't have the knowledge. I didn't have the transparency, the authenticity to, to say I'm hurting, to say I'm struggling, even with our online community. I mean, they, they knew that 
no, that's the first time I've said it out loud and it's kind of freeing in itself because that is just another step in my journey of seeing where I fit into rescue and mm -hmm. seeing if it is on a mental health advocacy, advocacy, I can't say it, but, <laughs> but you know what I mean, because I don't want this thought to leave um, or, or like, or what is it? And I think that's, what's really beautiful, even about being able to connect with you is uh, I thought the email that Ruth sent was spam. And I didn't believe I was like presented with this opportunity until Ruth popped up on our Zoom meeting for the pre. <laughs> I, and I never would have allowed that space to exist before. I, mm -hmm. I, I, I wouldn't have because I would have been like carrying this guilt of like rescue has literally taken everything from me, but I love it so much and I won't ever let it do that again. So how do I find my space in rescue? How do I do what I'm passionate about and not let it control me and mm -hmm. not let it? Yeah. So, but, but you're, it's like, but, Oh, but you're here. You're, you're sorry. with us today. I, and that's and, the thing. That's like, and, what's and you're, so you're, beautiful you're, about yeah. it. And you're a gift like, to, to me and to, to us. <laughs> and to I, I feel that now. Yeah. And I know that. And that's a lot of work to know that, to have yeah. the confidence to know that people love you, that people care about you. And I, I'm, I'm happy. And like, I get, I have the chills now just thinking about it because I already have like this, like title of my book. It's like how, how to be their voice without losing yours, you know, mm -hmm. like, <laughs> You're really special and people will support you and, Thank you, Doug. And, Doug. and, and let people in, you know? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, I think it's a team sport, this rescue. I don't think it's a solo and sport. It is. No. Um, and I think that's also, I'm hoping in this journey of, of me being more authentic, it, it, it allows other rescuers to know that those boundaries have to exist and that mm -hmm. openness has to exist just because you don't agree. There's no standard in rescue. There's no like, like standard of a rescue of what it should be. There's no law on that. Right. So just because you don't agree with what another rescue is doing that, like, how does that affect you mm -hmm. and your core and what you're doing and the attention is taking away from your animals and, and, and let's just, Let's just all hold hands. <laughs> Good, together. we should. We should. <laughs> well, it's so much more than that. But yes, you know what I mean. <laughs> well, I I think um, people need to to check you out and and you have you know while this is going on, especially again if you're listening in your car, you can come check this out. But it's going to be on the description box on Apple and Spotify, as well as we've been putting your uh, Instagram handle up and your TikTok yeah. and your Facebook. So people know how to reach you. Um, yeah. Reach out to her. And, and if you can do nothing more than just send her a loving comments, that's, uh, <laughs> that's, a, that. <laughs> that's a gift. Uh, if you can send a dollar, that's a gift. Oh if you, man, a dollar yeah. goes so you know, far. But, but, oh. also, but also just a thumbs up or, yeah. or, or a love, yeah. a love moment. Mm -hmm. is really special too because that picks yeah. us up sometimes when we're having a tough day yeah. um so i i respect and appreciate you so much and thank you for being on this and thanks for and, emailing me yeah we'll thank right. ruth for emailing me yeah. and then you too yeah ruth I'm, ruth does so much she's for us great she's yeah. so sweet oh she my really goodness. is so i'm i'm very grateful to all the support ruth gives us here yeah. at, in my office and my my uh, journey of what I'm trying to do. Yeah. So thank you. Yeah, and, thank um, you. and you are so brave and so special. <laughs> okay. Thank you. You touched me today. No. Okay. High five. Wait. Oh, here we go. High five. I don't know where it's... my camera's at. No, you <gasps> did it. You did a high oh, five. Did I? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> awesome.